Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey. And what if I shared with you the most crucial lesson in what you need to know from the best investor of all time, Warren Buffett, that could save you thousands of dollars in not having to go to business school. And you get it all right here in a six minute video of Buffett talking about his timeless investing principles and investing rules that are so simple that it's kind of surprising that not more people do it. And he revealed all this when Buffett was 54 years old in the fall of 19. 1984 in a popular television show, Adam Smith's Money World. And the pseudonym Adam Smith is actually of George Goodman, who interviewed Buffett in 1984 in this TV program that aired in 1985. And Adam Smith here talks about how if you had invested $10,000 in Berkshire in 1965, how much that would be worth in around 1985. But if you evaluate how much that's worth at the end of 2021, that would have been worth $364 million and Adam Smith also mentions how Buffett's net worth was around $500 million back in 1985. And now in 2022, that's worth about $103 billion. So it's amazing what the power of compounding will do. And so you're bound to get so much out of Buffett's timeless wisdom in the following. And if you appreciate content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel. And I'll also interject with a few lessons here to emphasize especially Buffett's takeaways. But there are others with a more secular approach who have also been very successful. Let's take Warren Buffett of Omaha, Nebraska. If you had put $10,000 in 1965 into his company, Berkshire Hathaway, you would have one million today. Warren was a chapter in my 1972 book, Super Money, so I've known him a long time. He learned his trade with Ben Graham, the original dean of security analysis at Columbia University. I don't think Warren has ever been on television until this interview, and he has certainly never courted publicity, but recently he got a lot of it when he emerged as the key figure in the takeover of ABC by Capital Cities. Warren will be the largest shareholder of the new company, and his own net worth is now far in excess of $500 million. But when I spoke with him last fall in his office in Omaha, he very characteristically made his investment style seem so perfectly simple. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth, and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. And if you blink, you might have missed Buffett's number one and two rules when it comes to investing because Buffett talked way faster in his 50s than nowadays in his 90s. And he just turned 92 on August 30th. So I hope Buffett keeps on living. But essentially, the number one and two rules are to never lose money. And we may think, well, duh, none of us ever want to lose money. But Buffett's way of assuring ourselves that we never lose money is to be buying companies and stocks at a discount to what we believe they're truly worth and that way we're buying them at what's called a margin of safety to their intrinsic value and if we buy a group of them like enough diversification then we're never probably going to lose money if we keep along this strategy and also Adam Smith continues in asking why is Buffett more successful than most money managers and even though it's asking about professionals whether you're just a retail investor like I am or a professional investor we can all improve based based on what Buffett says are the qualities we need in order to be a successful investor in the following. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable, personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Because this is not a business where you take polls, it's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two, and they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane uh, uh, methods of, of, of approaching that, but uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. The, the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether 
you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. It, all the ticker tells me is the price. And I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high. But, but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business, but the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation, and then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. And as a quick aside, Warren Buffett was so ahead of his time in being able to work from home in Omaha, Nebraska, before millennials were even born. And as Adam Smith asks him what it's like to work away from Wall Street, it's a testament to how Warren Buffett is working and living according to his inner values and not giving in to herd mentality by literally staying away from the world's financial center in New York City. So I think that it tells us a lot about what we can learn and also evaluate our own values to decide what works best for us and if we'd like to stay on the beaten path or off the beaten path in a road less traveled. So Buffett chose to stay in this world, Omaha, Nebraska, where corn grows just minutes from downtown. Now, Omaha is a nice town, but nobody claims it's a world financial center. Here, the only thundering herd is actually on four feet. Don't you find Omaha a little bit off the beaten track for the investment world? Well, believe it or not, uh, we get mail here, and uh, we get periodicals, and we get all the facts needed to make decisions. And unlike Wall Street, you'll notice we don't have 50 people coming up and whispering in our ear that we should be doing this or that this afternoon. You appreciate the lack of stimulation I like, here? I, I like the lack of stimulation. We get facts, not stimulation here. <laughs> How can you stay away from Wall Street? Well, if I were on Wall Street, I'd probably be a, a, a lot poorer. At, uh, uh, you get overstimulated in Wall Street, and uh, uh, you hear lots of things, and, and you, you, may, you may shorten your focus, and a short focus uh, is not conducive to, uh, to long profits. And uh, here I can just focus on what businesses are worth. And I don't need to be uh, in Washington to figure out what the Washington Post uh, newspaper is worth, and I don't need to be in New York to figure out what uh, some other company is worth. It's it's, it's simply it's an intellectual process, well, and, the, and the less the less static there is in that intellectual process, really the better off you are. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is is defining your level, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value. But what? there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't. In 30 years of investing, not one? I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great. company. I mean, a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on, and you're not going to be it's a participant. gone right past me. <laughs> Is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> are there I, don't have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do. I don't, you know, I, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about. And that may be too bad, but, uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily. And you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, nothing is forced upon you. So you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you get a strike call on you. If you get too many call on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, US Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches, and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. Isn't that boring? It would, it would bore most people, and, and certainly boredom is a, is, a, is a problem with most professional money managers. If they, if they, if they try to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients will start yelling, they'll start yelling swing, you bum, you know, from, the, from the stands. And that's very tough for people to do. Warren, your, your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. That, uh, the academics, for example, focus on, on uh, um, 
all kinds of variables. Partly by, because by academics, you mean uh, professors of right, finance? Right. Yeah. The, the and data business, is there. in business school. Sure. The, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years. Uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies, there are all these variables because the data are there. And, and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says uh, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And w once you have these skills, you just are, are, are dying to, uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. Uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of businesses. And so my final takeaway from Buffett's wisdom is to think of ourselves as business owners who are considering buying a part of a business when we are thinking about investing in any given stock. And it's not just a ticker symbol in our brokerage accounts, but it's a real living, breathing business that we might like to own for a long time. So I think it's practical for all of us to get real business experience by either working in retail or starting your own business or doing anything that you can to build your skills as a business owner, because then that helps empower you to know how to value cash flow and think about about how long a company has to live for, whether it's sort of a struggling business in a really competitive field, or if they have a business mode that allows them to thrive for a long time. And so if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well in being the best business analyst you can be, just like Buffett and Munger are. Till next time.